So today's video is all about um, stitching. Collision, smoothing, traces, squash and stretch. We've got formula and matrix and linear fields. There's a lot involved. But it's not as bad as it sounds. So let me show you right now how we're gonna do some stitching. Right, let's make a stitch effect through material. How do we do this? Right, so we need to start off with a, a matrix object and we're just gonna put in one, one and one for the size and then on this transform here, let's just put 0.5, sorry, 0.05, 0 0.05. So really, really tiny. To zoom in there right so we're going to start with that and now we're going to add a formula and then on the matrix under effectors just got to make sure that the formula is in there under effectors okay so on, on the formula we're going to take out the 50 and we're going to just put in four and this is how high it's going to move up and down and then we take the scale out as well so if we just play that we should have like a it's like a bobbin so if you imagine it's um stitching and it's just bobbing up and down but it can't just stitch on the on the spot this has to move along so all we do is we have to put the formula and the matrix and group them into a null object and then we need to move this make sure that the timeline is on zero and then we move this way over one side here and record the key a keyframe on the timeline and then we add let's have 200 frames and then we go to the end and then we move this right over to this side and then we record there so if we now go back and play that you'll get the kind of the bobbin head bobbin up and down like that so it's look it's like it's stitching but there is no there's no thread okay so how do we add a thread effect to this we do that with uh, a tracer object. So if we click on here and add a tracer, the tracers automatically put the link in for the null, but we can't use the null, we need to use the matrix. So if we drop the matrix in there, and now if we play it, it's tracing a spline on the matrix, but this doesn't render. Okay, if we try and render that, you don't see anything at all. So we need, we need to add a um a sweep and, and i'm going to use an end side and i'm going to put it in pretty small 0.05 and i'm going to put the end side under the sweep and the tracer in the same group as well so now if we run that look we've now got a piece of thread we've got a piece of geometry now that's going to render so this is our thread okay if we at this stage just put in a plane okay so now we've actually got the look of something stitching through what's going to be material but the problem we've got here is they're just looped they need to loop and then pull flat as as it goes into the material doesn't it because stitching doesn't stay looped like that so how are we going to flatten this out and have it up in the air to start with right so what we're going to use we're going to use um, a squash and stretch deformer, okay, which is under deformers here. So we put squash and stretch, and we're going to be squashing the the tracer line. So what we need to do is just we need to drop that as a child of the tracer, okay. Now if we click on squash and stretch, <laughs> uh, it's going to be hard for me to say that I think. Um, and now we just need to have a look at a few things here. I think. The ones that we need are factor, which stretch pulls that out, and the aspect. Yeah, these two. Okay, so we bring the aspect up, and let's bring the factor there. It's, it's, it's a bit of trial and error. Let's just have a little go. Let's have a look at the best way of doing this. Let's have that. maybe like that oh that's in that's negative isn't it so we need to go the other way there so something like that um okay 
So what we're going to have, that's actually, yeah. So we need it to be flat, but we need it to be higher and then it goes flat. So the way we do that is on the, on the squash and stretch, there's a field and we need to add a linear field. So if we just pan out so you can see, and we need to make this quite tight here, the, the gap between it, because we only want it to affect a very small amount as it goes along. All right, so when that's selected and we go to, let's have a look at the best place. Right, so we need this to be somewhere over here because it's going to be affecting it at this point. And we also, because it's not going to move, it's going to stay in one spot here. We need to add the linear field to the matrix because the matrix has, has got the animation on. It's got the timeline on, sorry, that moves. So we need to add the linear field to the matrix. Basically, that will then just move along with it like this look. Now, it's not quite working at the moment because we need to spin it round on the, the minus X, okay? And we need to move it, we need to move the linear field over so it's like that. Okay, so let's just have a little play around with these squash, squash, I knew I'd say squash, squash and stretch um fields now okay so we want it to be flat there but we want it we want the first one to be a bit higher up okay can we get a bit more height on that i think and then that let's have a look can we play around with some of these i think it's just these actually isn't it so that is probably right. Is there anything we can do? Okay. That's not too bad actually. Yeah. You see, yeah, I think we're okay with that. So if we just have a look, if we zoom in here look, and I show you what's happening, is the threads are going up high. Yeah. It's not the Loch Ness Monster, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so the threads are going up high and as you play it, they get pulled down. So I think we could actually flatten that out a little bit more. Look, yeah, that's what we need to do. So it's more, it's pulling it right down, isn't it? So it's up and then it's pulling it in. Yeah, there we go. So that's the thread effect. That's the, that's the sewing effect through the material. But there's one, there's one little effect we can do now before we call it before we say that's that's the final effect we can actually make this material look like it's puckering slightly as it's going in you know like it it would be disturbed by the thread and what we do with that is we we add the the plane we add a, a, a collision deformer to the plane okay uh, I can never find it uh, collision there it is there it is so we put collision un under the plane and what are we going to collide with it we're going to collide the the sweep okay so we go to colliders and then we drop sweep into collider there and let's have a look at advance i think we need to bring the scale down to say about point two maybe Five steps, 16 there, about, about 50, these about 10, that sort of thing. Okay, let's just have a look at what that does. Now, obviously, we need to put on, go out shading lines, and we need to add some more geometry to this. Because at the moment, we've only got 10 segments on the whole thing. So we need to increase this quite a lot. Now, the more you increase it, the slower your computer is going to run, unfortunately. This, these subdivisions do take it out of it. But you need them in there for this to have the effect. As you can see, it's starting to slow the thing down now. So I think you can see that it is, it's disturbing the surface there, okay? So it is kind of going up and it's pulling the material and it's pulling through it. But the more subdivisions you have here, the better it will look. 
but it will slow this down considerably. So I don't know if I can just, I might get away with it on here. Let's just try 800 by 800. And just see, it's gonna slow it down a lot. But this is the effect we want. We don't want it to just look like it's passing through something invisible. It wants to look like it's going into thread, it's pulling it and it's puckering it and it's going back through. And this is what this will do. So you can see on the screen now that it's really starting to pull down, but it will take a while for this. So what I might do is speed this bit up and you'll see the final result at the end. So I hope you enjoyed that video on how to stitch into material. If you did like it, give Mike a like down here. Or is it down here? Down there somewhere. We've got one of those. <laughs> Please click on that for me. I will then make more of these videos. I've got some great ones coming up and I'll speak to you in them. I'll see you soon. My name is Mike German from Visual Animation. Speak soon. Bye for now.